Was Aaron Burr found hiding in a cave in Alabama after his duel with Alexander Hamilton? That question was asked as part of Ask Alabama. The answer is no. But he was arrested in Alabama, not for the duel with Hamilton, but because he was engaged in a conspiracy to become King of Mexico. Maybe. Full disclosure, this question didn't get the most Ask Alabama votes, but it was a weird story, so we're doing it anyway. Quick recap, Aaron Burr was vice president under Thomas Jefferson. Burr was sick of former Secretary of Treasury Alexander Hamilton bad-mouthing him all the time, so he challenged him to a duel and killed him. They made a whole play about it. But our story starts where that play ends. That duel is in 1804, and while Burr never faced charges for the duel, it did kill his political career because people liked Hamilton. People still seem to like Hamilton. So with the presidency out of reach, Burr decided, fine. I'll just start my own country. So he got some guys together and said, okay, so here's the plan. I've leased some land out west from Spain to settle. So we'll head west and then south, gathering up men and material and say it's for the settlement. But when we get there, we're really gonna invade Mexico and name me king. He got a few guys on board, but it's way easier to start your own country if you have backing from a foreign government. So separately, Burr went to England and Spain. Keep in mind, Mexico is Spanish land at this point. And Burr told them, Okay, so here's the real plan. I gather up an army to settle my land, but really we're gonna grab up a bunch of America's land in the West and secede from the Union. Who knows, we may even invade the US and take it over. English and Spanish agents both gave him some money, but when they reported back to their countries with their proposal to join Team Burr, both countries said, pass. So Burr headed west and then south and made some headways getting men and supplies. But building an army to overthrow the government is hard to do in secret, so rumors started getting back to President Thomas Jefferson that Burr was up to something, whatever it was. Those rumors were confirmed when one of Burr's co-conspirators accidentally spilled the beans about the plan to an agent of Thomas Jefferson thinking he was already on board. Then another co-conspirator just flipped and started sending letters from Burr to Thomas Jefferson. At this point, Jefferson was sick of Burr. He was a political opponent, he was shooting founding fathers, and now he was trying to either cause a rebellion in the West or spark a war with Spain. So Jefferson sent out the word to governors. He said, okay guys, so here's the plan. Just arrest him. And that was the end for Burr's little plan. His ships and supplies were seized, his co-conspirators and the soldiers he'd been promised by them never came through. In 1806, Burr arrived in Natchez. By this point in the plan, he was supposed to have a thousand men to head west with. Some accounts say he had less than a hundred. And with only a handful of men, he was arrested in Natchez, but managed to escape into the wilderness before his trial. Burr stayed on the lam for a few weeks, but he was eventually spotted in what is now Wakefield, Alabama in Washington County. He had stopped to ask for directions, but got recognized because he was like a super famous traitor, so he was arrested again. This time there was no escape. He was escorted back to Virginia to be tried for treason. But Burr's luck came through one last time. In the end, the judge ruled they couldn't convict Burr for treason because technically he hadn't done anything yet. So Burr walked, but this was his last hurrah in the American history books. Folks in the U.S. were just sick of him. He moved to Europe for a few years to push for an invasion of the U.S., but the other countries weren't having it either. In the end, he moved back to New York under an assumed name and lived out the rest of his days in relative obscurity. So that's what Aaron Burr was doing in Alabama. He was hiding from the law after a plan for treason blew up in his face. Dude really was the worst founding father. I'm Jonathan Sobolewski for Reckon. Hey everybody, if you like this video, you can help us out by leaving a like and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a video. And if you've got questions about Alabama you want answered, you can leave your questions at al.com ask. Thanks for watching.